It's the Weather Blender blog for the 30th of January. Hey everybody, Spencer Atkins here with you. Big monster, large storm brewing. But I got news, again, if you're watching in West Virginia or Kentucky or Southern Ohio, the main act is going to be to the north, but it's certainly worth talking about. If you have travel plans, of course, you're going to be hearing about this storm too. So let's show you what's going on. Starting off here with the watches, and you can see all the deep blue winter storm watches, interestingly enough, around Chicago, that kind of uh, green, that is a blizzard watch. So obviously this is a pretty big deal. The low pressure, if we look at the, uh, the map here that shows us the moisture in the atmosphere, this is uh, what we call water vapor, looking at toward the middle layers of the atmosphere. And I had to draw the yellow line in to kind of help you see the swirl here. And that's where the uh, center of low pressure is now, moving from California on over to Nevada. And it is going to continue to loop its way down toward Texas and on up to the north and to the east. As uh, noted here in the upper right, there's an important dome of cold air feeding in from the north into this. Now, this is the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, surface map, satellite radar composite. And uh, you can see kind of the surface lows. It's painting it as about three different lows around Nevada, California. I've drawn in that, that yellow line there. Lots of moisture in the Gulf of Mexico with rain. That's going to feed into this and the cold air from the north. And those are great ingredients along with an area of low pressure that will be intensifying to really create a big storm. Now this is the best fit path of the surface low through Tuesday night. We're just looking at all the models and uh, every time, let's say in the first time period, you see all the stars, those are all the different models and where they put the low. Second time period, the purple, all the uh, diamonds, that's where the low is. And then you can see how the grouping spreads a little bit there uh, out toward 60 hours, but at 72 hours actually getting a little tighter and then I've kind of just freehand drawn uh, kind of a sketch of where it probably will be. Anytime that the low is basically to the uh, the west or northwest of the Ohio River, the, uh, the tri-state, the mountains of West Virginia usually pick up more wet than white, but again the Midwest is just going to get uh, slobber knocked here. Let's show you what's going on. Two different maps of the same time period. 7 p.m. Monday, you can see the blue line, that's your rain snow line if you're looking at the thicknesses from 1,000 to 500 millibars. That's about an 18,000 foot thickness layer that you're looking at and you'd say well okay any precipitation north of that line would be snow okay and there's not that much maybe a little around Wheeling maybe a little around Martinsburg in West Virginia and then we'd see uh, some snow in Michigan and of course out in Iowa. But I want to show you a little lower layer this is 1000 to uh, 850 millibars this is about the lowest 5,000 feet and did you notice look at the snow line drifted south actually what that's showing us is that there's cold air below and warmer air up top and so that could be a little freezing drizzle signal there, maybe a little light freezing rain Monday night. So we'll have to watch that, especially southern Ohio, especially, let's say, the Wheeling area and areas east of the main ridge of the Appalachians. So we'll have to watch that. Here we go, 7 a.m. on uh, Tuesday. The rain snow line continues to push a little farther to the north, counterclockwise flow, so you would expect a southerly breeze. So things are warming up a little bit. And uh, you can see some pretty good snow rolling, uh, let's say, southern Michigan, Detroit, out toward uh, Lansing and back down towards South Bend. Again, we stepped down a little bit. The lowest 5,000 feet, guess what? The line moved south again. So still have eastern panhandle freezing rain possible. So have a little light freezing rain possible around Wheeling in that yellow stripe there. And then I think obviously everything warms up pretty quickly. Uh, and so we don't need to use the two different layers. This is just again looking at the 18,000 foot layer, 1,000 millibars to 500 millibars. The low is starting to really wrap up. It's south of St. Louis. Actually, it's a little closer to Memphis. And now you continue to have snow across, let's say, the Ohio Turnpike stretched out to the west and uh, heading out over towards Chicago and the wind. Anytime you have all your isobars really tight, we call that packing of the isobars, it's a lot of pressure squeezed together. And anytime you have a high sitting next to a low, and there's a bunch of high to the north sitting next to that very strong low, the wind is going to pick up very intensely. So you could be looking at blizzard here now across Illinois. And this is, again, 7 p.m. Tuesday. 7 a.m. I know it says Monday. I'm sorry about that. That should be 7 a.m. Wednesday. The low is sitting over central Illinois and the heavy, heavy snow. It could be some heavy wet snow too over southeast Michigan stretching all the way back into Chicago. And remember, Chicago could be picking up lake moisture as well. Just a big old mess. And could see freezing rain and uh, plain old rain mixing in up toward the Cleveland area. And uh, once again, we have just plain old rain across West Virginia. But if you'll notice, it's almost like a V shape, and uh, kind of a V that points up to the upper right of the screen. And you're kind of seeing a splitting here. So early heavy rains that kind of split. And now this is by 7 p.m. I don't know why I said Monday. I, don't, I was uh, kind of keyed in there. That's 7 p.m. Wednesday. 
again, I apologize for that, 7 p.m. Wednesday, uh, you're seeing, and now the snow is heaviest up in New England, the low is just rocketing off to the east, and we have only light snow left over in the thumb of Michigan. We're just starting to pick up a little light snow on that northwesterly breeze and off the Great Lakes around, uh, let's say, Morgantown, down through about Braxton County, and then now this is Thursday morning. I finally learned how to type. Big areas of high pressure to the north. The low has really all gone away, and we're just into what we call the upslope snow. It's light stuff, eastern Ohio, across West Virginia, and just the eastern extreme tip of Kentucky. Now, freezing rain on the NAM model, showing about a half of an inch stretching around the Cleveland area, back down into the Indianapolis area, back into southern Illinois. That's the NAM's look at it. I like the GFS look at it again. This is actually 24 hours less. This is through 7 a.m. Tuesday, but you know what? I think it's more accurate. And you can see a little freezing rain again from I-64 uh, to the north in West Virginia and through southern Ohio, but it's less than a quarter of an inch. And I'll tell you this, too, by Tuesday, that temperature is really going to pop. So it's a Monday night, Tuesday morning deal with the freezing rain, and after that, it's just plain old rain. And, of course, it's going to be warm on uh, Tuesday. Easily could be 50 degrees plus for Charleston, Huntington, Ashland, Ironton, Portsmouth in the afternoon. So only that time frame, Monday night through real early Tuesday, we're worried about freezing. Nam snowfall. Oh, my goodness. Family and friends in Michigan, watch out. If you had travel plans, maybe to go to Detroit, watch out if you're – Traveling to go from Detroit, Chicago, if you had a flight, let's say, out of Charleston that hops through Detroit or Chicago, ugh, boy, you better plan for some big delays or maybe even think about going later in the week. Look at that stripe. NAM shows 18 inches of snow possible in southern Michigan, northern Illinois, the northern tip of Indiana, and back through Missouri, and even eastern Kansas, and even a chunk of Oklahoma. Now, that may be overblown. And this continues to shift a little bit to the north and to the east. But you know what? 12 inches plus? I'm thinking you could do that like falling off a log. Barely any snow at all. West Virginia, Kentucky, really nothing. And uh, 16 inches across upstate New York on over through New Hampshire. Looks very similar to the GFS. GFS is 16 inches around Metro Detroit, 18 inches Chicago, back through Peoria, back through eastern uh, Iowa, and the northeastern corner of Missouri, 18 inches upstate New York, 18 inches upstate New Hampshire, western sections of uh, New England, and you can see that nice, beautiful stripe of heavy snow blowing across from west to east. Just an amazing, amazing storm. Estimated just plain old water precipitation through Friday. It's uh, three-quarters of an inch over Charleston. It's about an inch over Huntington. It's about half of an inch over Bluefield and Beckley, but you can see it's almost two inches in Cleveland. And uh, now this was just kind of a, a, the computers spit this out, and then it's kind of tweaked by the uh, what we call the HPC it has some human input on that. I would probably lift that bullseye a little farther to the north and west with each successive run. We're seeing that of the data. So uh, that is a peek at what's going on. And again, if you have travel plans Tuesday or Wednesday out to the Midwest, you got a flight that connects Detroit, Chicago, or you're going to take the bus, or you're just going to drive, or you're waiting on a delivery from up that way, something like that. Huge headaches. Do expect delays. Expect that you're going to hear a lot about this in the media. Again, if you're in West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, Southern Ohio, I think we'll have wind, maybe a little brief period of freezing rain on Monday night into Tuesday morning, then we're done with that. Uh, rain on and off Tuesday, heavy rain and wind early Wednesday, and then we just taper off into some light snow. So more of a nuisance for us. We'll watch the streams and creeks in the high terrain because there's still a snowpack that's melting. The water will rise on the smaller streams and creeks. We'll let you know if there are any flooding concerns on that. That's the scoop. Stay safe. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know. Throw some comments down in the comment section uh, anywhere you see this, and I would appreciate that. We'll see you later on the Weather Blender blog.